up everybody, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another Gutenberg WordPress tutorial. In this video, we're going to continue the work that we've been doing on our social row custom block. In the previous lesson, we created this custom template to reuse some uh, default blocks coming from Gutenberg, coming from the WordPress core. But unfortunately, these are not flexible enough to accommodate all the things that we need to do. So let's create something more custom and a little bit more exciting. First, let's remove this template because we're not going to use it. Let's clean these up and also here and because we're not going to use the inner blocks we can remove it from the list of our imports to make our plugin a little bit lighter. This episode is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the largest independent cloud computing provider which needs no introduction as it's been around since 2003. That was 18 years ago and at that time graphics card looked like this. <laughs> They are independently owned and founded on a law for Linux, open source technologies and the community that surrounds them. Linode makes it easy to give your creations their own personal space on the internet. No matter what skill levels you're at or what technology stack you use, Linode can help your ideas come to life on the web. And it's not like AWS where you need a certificate only to figure out how they name things. Are you looking for a small server for your personal blog, portfolio or game server? or your business is scaling fast and you're looking for an affordable and reliable solution to serve millions of visitors, Linode has you covered. Their extensive documentation is filled with guides and tutorials to help you get started. And if you run into any trouble, Linode comes with an amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket for everyone. You don't need to be a platinum member or whatever that means just to get help. Adopting a new service is sometimes scary and filled with uncertainty. That's why Linode is offering $100 60-day credit on your new account just to try it, with no strings attached. Sign up today at linode.com slash or click the link in the description below. Linode. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Now, let's create a bunch of custom attributes that we're going to use in our plugin. First of all, let's define the attributes object and comma at the end, of course. And inside here, first we can define the account type. And the account type is gonna be an object with a type string, which is gonna hold the type of account that we wanna define in this specific row. And in this case, a default might be Twitter, something like that. Then here we need to specify a list of all the account types that we want to allow the user to define in this custom social row. And I'm going to just copy them from a previous section that I did because I don't want to type them. But basically we have three options that we want to give the user. We want to give the user to create a row with a Twitter link. So the user have to follow an account on Twitter, then a tweet, it means that they have to share a message on tweet, and then YouTube, it means they have to subscribe. You can copy all these things from the source code repository, you can find the link in the description below. Now that we have all our attributes, we can use them to define all the things that we need in our edit method. So let's pass the attributes and then the set attributes method that it's available by default inside Gutenberg. We don't need to import this from anywhere. So what I want to do here, I want a little, a bunch of options here that the user can do. So instead of having this row with the image and then some custom button text, I want a row, uh, I want a social row that whenever the user adds another one, we have some options in the inspector panel here to decide what type of social media should be showed in that specific row. So what type of action the user has to do. And here I want a, a simple radio button to give the three options that I defined. So send a tweet, follow on Twitter or subscribe on a YouTube channel. And based on those options, based on the radio selection of the option, the social row should change and return a different UI in order to have different options. So add a tweet or add the link to the subscription YouTube channel and stuff like that. So let's do it. So first of all, we need to import some custom elements from the block editor in order to uh, use them in our edit method. And the first element is the inspector 
controls, which allows us to uh, create a panel inside the inspector, inside this section of the inspector. So here, first of all, let's wrap these around parentheses so we can indent this properly. And here we can type the inspector control element. The inspector controls will give us access to that control panel to the right. Without this, we cannot tell Gutenberg that in our edit method, whenever the user uses our custom block, we want to add something to the control panel to the right or the sidebar, whatever it's called. Now that we are inside here, first of all, let's give it a little inline style because I already know this is not going to look good unless I give it a margin bottom of uh, 40 pixel and this is awful but it is the styling of react so we need to follow that coding convention then here we can create a panel body element and then a panel row this is very important because this is the type of structure that wordpress expects for all those options in the sidebar panel if we don't respect this structure and inspect and controls the body panel and the body row it's not going to look native it's going to look very bad very ugly out of line out of style so it's going to look cheap and not well done always remember to follow the native structure of WordPress. Of course, because we are using these custom elements, we need to import them from the predefined components of WordPress. So let's go up here and let's import the panel body and then the panel row. And I already know that I need the radio control, so I'm gonna import that as well from the WordPress package, WordPress. But in this case, we need to tap these from the component section. Perfect. Now we have these three elements that we can use in our edit method. Now here, let's create the radio button control that will give the user the option to select which type of social media we want to print in our custom social media row. So let's open the radio control. And this is a self-closing tag, so we can self-close it like this. Let's indent it here. Let's specify a label. It's going to be equal to uh, something like social media, but you can call this however you want. Then we can use a little help tag that will give us the ability to write a little excerpt, a tip caption underneath this radio control, which is going to be helpful for the user. Something like the type of social media to use something like that, whatever you want. Then we need to define a pre-selected option. In our case, we want the default value that we have in our attributes account set, account type. So the default value is going to be Twitter. So let's copy, let's specify as a selected option, the attributes account type object. And then we can, we need to specify a list of options, everything, all the options, the selections available in this radio group, in this radio control group. And we need to specify them by opening an object and then opening an array. And inside the array, we need to write each option as a standalone object because each option has the label, which is going to be something like uh, follow on Twitter. And then the value, which is what we're going to store in our account type attributes. And the value is going to be Twitter. Of course, you can use numbers or integers as value. Whatever it feels more natural for you is not required to use strings. But of course, if you change this value to be a number, then you need to specify this type, this object type as an integer and not as a string. Then let's add the uh, share a tweet option and these we can call it tweet and then the last one can be subscribe on youtube and it can be youtube the value perfect then we need the on change method this is pretty standard it's basically standard html the on change method can be hooked to a specific function in order to save the new value that the user is going to select from within the radio group and we're already importing into the edit method the set attributes method set attributes method will allow us to quickly update the account type value with the new selected value in the radio group so let's do it Let's use the arrow function to pass the value. So we don't change the scope. We don't need to do anything crazy and set the attributes. And because the set the attributes, it's already part 
of the attributes. This is kind of weird, but set the attributes already assumes that you have an object called attributes. We don't need to, this is actually attributes, otherwise it's not gonna work. <laughs> I found a typo while explaining things. So this is attributes. Remember, this is not gonna work otherwise. But anyway, I was saying, since the set attributes already gives for granted that we have an attributes object, we need we can definitely avoid to write again attributes account type object because we are already inside the attributes in the set attributes so we can directly update the account type with the new value of this method, the selected value of the radio control. Perfect. Just to see if things are correct, we can print the attributes account type outside the inspector control. And if we print whatever things we wanna write here outside the inspector control, this is where the elements are gonna be generated in the actual editor page. Everything that is written in the inspector control is gonna be generated inside the property sidebar. So that looks pretty good. Let's save, let's open our terminal, let's run npm start. Let's see if we have any errors. Seems that we're all good. Let's open our post editor, let's refresh. Let's kick off the Alaka giveaway. We already have by default this social row called Twitter because the default attributes in our code, it's Twitter. If we check here, when we select anything else, we have the option for the image, the options for the title. If we select our social row here, now we have the social media section with the radio button option with the three options that we specify. Follow on Twitter, share or tweet, and subscribe on YouTube. And if I change this, look at this changes also here because we are updating the attributes. So share, tweet, save, that's perfect. If I update this and I refresh this page, my selection is maintained and the tweet and also the attributes in maintained. And I can add another one and this one can be YouTube and I can add another one and this one can be Twitter. So if I update and I refresh this page, now I have my three social rows with the three options that I selected. That's perfect. This gives us the backend flexibility to print whatever type of components we want here in order to give the user the ability to specify what tweet the user should write or what is the YouTube channel that you want the user uh, to subscribe to and what Twitter account you want to follow. All done through a very simple radio button selection. But we're gonna see this in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, leave it a thumbs up if you like it. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.